What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host that honestly kind of likes post sushi burps, Zach, and today subreddit is r slash black hole revenge. Oh, but you'd be a silly little doorknob if you thought that was it. <laughs> oh no, we have r slash nuclear revenge and r slash petty revenge. We're skipping rungs down the ladder of revenge magnitudes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called, Don't Be a Snitch, B. I'm going to start this by saying that, unlike most people who post things like this, I'm not sorry. At all. I'm aware that what I did was, to put it mildly, evil. But honestly, I don't care. Make of that what you will. I did what I did. This story occurs in the early 2000s in a large urban city that I'm going to decline to name. I was 17 at the time. I was a heroin addict. My addiction had consumed the entirety of my life. My mother threw me out of our apartment after I stole our rent money for the second time to pay my dealer. She did the right thing, not gonna argue it. I was a crappy human and, in a way, I deserved the life I ended up leading thereafter. I'm still a crappy human, but I at least don't get high anymore. I ended up a prostitute, not an escort. I was the type of working girl you found on some street corners, not in the phone book with a booking agent. It wasn't a fun job and the guy I worked for was a schlong head, but he kept me high more often than not and didn't beat my ass too often. So as far as I was concerned, it was whatever. He had other girls besides me working for him. We'll call them Honey and Sugar. Honey was okay. She was a user like I was, and if I was short, she was always down to share a rinse or go in for a little extra to get me straight if I was feeling crappy and our daddy was in a bad mood and I didn't want to ask for an extra hit. I liked her, and so I never minded working with her. She also knew how to keep her mouth shut, which was something I appreciated. Sugar, on the other hand, was another story. This freaking bimbo. Anything she heard went right back to daddy's ear. Anything she saw got reported on. Kept something if you got a tip so you could buy some condoms or a candy bar? She's snitching. Spent a little extra time with a date? that mouth would run. The baseball pitcher never shut up, and Honey and I hated her for it. The crazy thing was that it didn't win her points with our daddy either. He didn't like that crap any more than we did. He knew we did minor crap, and as long as we weren't screwing with his money, he didn't give a damn about five bucks here or there because it meant we weren't asking him for crap. But if she brought it to his attention, he had no choice but to do something about it. It got old fast. She was weird too. Even though she did all that crap, she still somehow thought that we were all friends. Like she'd snitch and I'd get my ass beat and then the next day she'd act all buddy buddy like she thought I just forgot what she did now that it was all said and done. She had the freaking audacity to be hurt when I didn't want to work with her and that Honey and I would get quiet and ignore her if we had to be around each other. It was crazy. So yeah, safe to say I had a problem with her and I was waiting for a chance to screw her over royally. The opportunity came on a slow night. It was about 1 a.m. and it was pissing rain. I was tired. I'd been out since 9 and I'd only had one date, so I was sweating going home with a light when this car rolls up. Nice car, a bit dated but still nicer than most of the other ones rolling around in the area, so I perked up. Window goes down and it's an older dude in his 50s. He had this super dark hair that I automatically knew came out of a box because his mustache was salt and pepper, and the whole car smelled weirdly like mint. I didn't care. I needed the money, so I got in. He wanted full service, which was $100 in my pocket, which would be enough that I could call it a night and go home, and my daddy wouldn't be too crappy about it. He'd be crappy because it was still a light bag, but I'd get my hit and I could go the frick to sleep and not be sick. Dude drives us to the back of this shut down bodega, and I was ready to just get it done, so I was down. He and I moved to the back seat, and he handed me my money and I looked down to stuff in my bra, and then I started pulling up my skirt. I only took my eyes off of him for half a second, but all of a sudden the dude grabbed me by the throat with both hands and started squeezing. The funny thing is that I wasn't even surprised. 
I seriously consider just not fighting, just letting it happen. I was miserable. My life was crap and it wasn't like anybody would miss me. Would it be so bad? It wouldn't really be suicide, which meant I wouldn't go to hell, raised Catholic. I see the irony in my thinking now, believe me. Prostitution and drug use? Okay. Suicide? Hell nah! Religion is a hell of a drug, kids. Just say no. Yeah. In the end, I fought back. He had me halfway up against the door, so I pretended to be out and went limp, and he let go of my throat. To get his fly down, I guess. And while he was leaned back off of me, I pulled my leg up and kicked him in the balls, and then reached behind me and went for the door handle. It wasn't locked, and I ended up on the ground on my ass. I got up and booked it down the street as fast as I could. Lost both my shoes in the process because no way was I trying to run in heels. Good news? I still had my money. My neck was bruised to frickin' back, but it wasn't long before I was too high to care. Life went on. New day, same BS. Two months later, when it was the middle of summer, me and Sugar were out together. Honey already had a date, and I had just come back from one, so I was making use of an alley for a bit of cleanup. Sugar was standing on the sidewalk waiting, and then what do I see rolling down the road? The nice sedan. It slowed down, and I knew it was him. Same guy, same car, and Sugar was gonna take the date. The same date that almost killed me. He hadn't seen me where I was wiping myself off behind the dumpster, but I saw him. I could have said something. I could have yelled at Sugar and told her about the guy, but I didn't. I didn't say a word. I watched her get in that car, and I watched the taillights fade out into the distance. And I already knew Sugar wasn't going to be coming home that night. Bye, Pete. Tell Daddy some crap now. She didn't have a clue what she'd just gotten herself into either. See, I told Honey about the guy as soon as I got back. Told her how he looked and what car he drove and about how he smelled so she wouldn't get in with the same psycho I did by accident. But I'd never warned Sugar. Maybe in the back of my mind, I was hoping that I'd have the opportunity to do what I did. Sugar didn't come back that night, or any other in the next year I worked. I only saw the car one more time, driving slow down the street to look at who was out. I waved and blew him a kiss. He did me a favor after all, so no hard feelings about the whole strangling thing. I sure as crap wasn't getting in his car again, but I wasn't mad about it. He looked so confused that he actually looked like he was going to stop for a minute. But I guess he thought better of it because he sped up and kept going. I never saw him or that car again. Not too long after that, I got arrested, which led me to actually getting clean and getting my crap together. Never told anybody about what I did that night until now. Never told the cops about him either because A, I was doing my own dirt, and B, as long as Honey wasn't getting in his car, I didn't give a crap who else he picked up. Still don't. Not my problem. No idea what happened to Sugar after she got in the car that night. I never heard anything about her again, and neither did anybody else that I know of. No body ever showed up either, so it's not 100% certain that he killed her, but I think he did. I know he was planning on killing me that night. It explains why he didn't complain about the fact that I told him money first. He just handed it over. No argument. No half now an and half when I get off. He figured he'd just get it back when he was done. Not like I was gonna need it anymore. Joke's on him. I got away and I didn't have to screw him. Sometimes everybody wins. Except Sugar. That is, because screw her. Okay, first off I gotta say, good writing. I'm a sucker for a well-written story on here. But holy buffalo chips, that was quite the look into, um, that part of the world, I guess. I will say this, it's absolutely none of my business what you want to do to earn a living. However, this is a little messed up given how there are a lot of people getting hurt and even killed. Not just, you know, people getting strangled in cars, but also drugs. Because if you don't get your fix, um, well, you're going to be really sick and I'm pretty sure you can die from withdrawals. And say you do have a good night where you don't die and you get some money so you get your fix. Well, that could be your last thing you ever do. What I'm trying to say is, this is absolutely horrible and not uncommon. Everyone is doing something horrible in this story. Just, wow! Of course, OP here may more or less just be a victim of circumstance rather than an actual person at play here. However, there was an obvious inaction here that could have saved someone's life. Despite not everyone maybe believing that it was a life worth saving, but it really was. 
Always time to change, and at least OP admits it was kind of not the right thing to do at all. Hope they're doing well now. Alright guys, um, I know very little about HOAs, however I hate them. It's just the principle of me owning a property, and then someone telling me how to run said property. Damn government does that enough already. I don't even know HOA telling me how to run my property. If I want fire titty torpedo fireworks in my backyard, I'ma do so, damn it! Anyways, this story's called Richard Glassell's Revenge on His HOA. So, just to start off, this is a pretty old story I remembered from not long after I moved out to the backwater armpit of Satan we call Arizona. Slow up there, buddy. If anybody's gonna call anything an armpit of Satan, okay? You gotta, you gotta consider Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, some parts of Texas, because they are humid. Armpits are humid, not dry. If you got a dry armpit, well, that's weird. Anyways, sorry. And was instrumental in my parents not buying a house in a neighborhood with an HOA initially. I don't think I've seen the story around this Reddit yet, so I decided to post what I remember and what I was able to dig back up about the case. Backstory. This part of the story takes place shortly before 2000. In my state, we have numerous retiree communities that are run by HOAs. The vast majority of them, in my experience as a respite and habilitation provider, can be summarized simply as near to full on tyrannical in their inter community politics, often targeting members out of the clique while heavily favoring those who fell in line. In this case, it all started with Richer and new HOA board, henceforth going to be abbreviated as NHB for convenience's sake. From what details I can remember, Richard had lived in his house in the community under the prior HOA board and had lived in his house for close to 10 years. Prior, a community mailbox was installed near his driveway and had the borders of his house lined with row hedges. These two details will be important later. However, around early 2000, a new HOA governing board was elected. By this time, many others had moved into the area and had began parking in front of the aforementioned mailbox a number of which, to my memory, were NHB board members. Richard had at first tried talking to the offending mailbox blockers that would block his driveway. Eventually, however, he would resort to simply parking his car in front of the driveway and, by extension, the mailboxes. In retaliation, the NHB would tow his car and invoice Richard for it. In addition to this, Richard was not the type to constantly preen and prune his hedges around his house or keep the lawn well kept. The HOA, as a result, began to send landscapers to trim them for him and would naturally invoice him every time they did for the bill. Richard, both verbally and in writing, in rather rude terms, requested they not send them and denied the landscapers access to his house. But he was still invoiced for their being contracted and sent away. Eventually, as I remember, the NHB would send the landscapers to his house when he was away or not home, and then invoice him the costs after. Finally having enough, to my memory, Richard ended up killing off his lawn and hedges to force NHB to stop sending landscapers. But due to laws in my state and the NHB's bylaws itself, they were able to sue for the cost of all the invoices sent over the course of nearly a year or so, and managed to foreclose on Richard's house for unpaid fees, where he was forced to move out and chose to move to California for a time, the revenge. With the events leading up to the nuclear revenge set in place, now we can discuss Richard's revenge. Richard, to my memory, had been practically living out of a trailer for a little while stewing over his treatment at the hands of his former NHB. Richard had still owned a storage unit in Arizona, which contained his rifle and two semi-automatic handguns. That April, he returned to Arizona with one goal in mind, revenge. Richard's former HOA held official meetings bi-yearly, with other small meetings for emergencies or when voted to convene. Richard entered the NHB's meeting with his weapons, firing and killing two board members outright, wounding one more and wounding another during a scuffle with another man trying to wrestle his rifle away from him. When later questioned why he committed the crime, his only response was, I was getting even. Later, Richard was sentenced to death for the murders, passing of natural causes while still on death row. In the end, as I recall, the HOA was disbanded for some time following the wake of the murders. They have, at this point, re-established, but from what I recall, they've been quite careful who they elect to the board. 
And that's the story as I remember it. Sorry if some details are a little vague, sparse, or slightly off on some details. These events happened almost 20 years ago, and I was fairly young at the time. Having only been told the story later by my father and friends, and a little side research of my own, and I thought that it might fit well on this subreddit, and as promised, some further reading about Glassell and the crime. Sorry if it's a little sparse, but most information on him was in the local papers and newsletters, and I'm having a hard time in post finding a lot of the old articles about him. Okay, well, so this is Nuclear Revenge, but holy crap I did not expect that. Like, the crap went for the fan at, like, Mach 5. That was... Wow, that was just an abrupt... Whoa! I don't know what I expected, but I did not expect that. Anyways, I believe the point of Nuclear Revenge is revenge that just goes nuclear. Not 100% morally justifiable. And despite the little bit I did at the beginning, I, I don't think you should kill your HOA board members. It's just gonna cause you a lot more trouble than it's worth, really. It it don't do that. Really don't. Okay, so here we're gonna tone it down a little bit. Okay, we have r slash petty revenge. We're gonna end on a light note, or should I say brown note? <laughs> I don't think my neighbor would let her dog poop on my porch again. Okay, so I have been living in this house for two years, and the neighborhood is very quiet and safe, so I don't have something to complain about. Except for the little bastard that my neighbor just got. Apparently, his designated place to poop is right in my porch, and I wouldn't care if just the owner was a little considerate and cleaned after her dog finished. When I first started noticing the poop, I cleaned it thinking it was a stray dog or something, but then, one day, I was on the porch myself, and the little bastard came out of my neighbor's house, saw me, and returned. My neighbor must have noticed that her dog returned too fast, so she went out of her house to check what had scared the dog, and there I was. We made eye contact, and I nodded. I had a feeling, so I remained sat in my porch for a little more, and there she was peeking through the wall to see if I was gone to let the little bastard poop on my porch. After some time, she finally gave up and put a leash on the dog to take him poop somewhere else. By the way, she didn't carry anything to clean whatever her dog produced, so yeah, she is a disgusting person. I was pissed. Not only was she aware of what the dog was doing, but she was waiting for an opportunity to let him do it again. I wanted to talk with her to see if we can resolve this, but apparently communication wasn't going to work in this case. So I decided I would scare her a little bit. I was going to ask her politely, but the landlord had already done that a few times and this woman just brushed it off. My boyfriend got to my house just at the time that my neighbor was unpacking some stuff from her car on the other side of the parking lot, which is divided by a wall. Making sure she was able to listen to me, I started telling my boyfriend that I have seen a dog on my porch several times that didn't have a collar. So, I believe that he must be a stray, and I had decided that I should eat the dog since it was culturally accepted in my country to eat them if they don't have an owner. I then described graphically which method of preparation I should use and what ingredients I needed to add. I said that all I needed was to wait for the dog to appear to lure him in my house and start cooking him. I couldn't see my neighbor's face, but I would have loved to see it. Plus, I don't see her dog around anymore. You know what? That's pretty good revenge if you don't care what people think about you. Because you may or may not have justified some forms of racism that may have existed within her or her friend circle. So, just be careful and enjoy your dog dookie free porch. Have you guys ever had to deal with any dastardly defecators in your days? Alliteration for the Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.